you'd like to squeak with Chica, it's easy to do. <laughs> Well everyone, as of February 2nd, this channel has been around for one year. It's been a year since I uploaded my first video and joined YouTube to share the stories of the channels you love and so much more. And so far, over 400 of you have joined me so thank you all so much for your support. Now the subject of this video is one that I have gotten the most requests to do by far. That's right, it's Universal Kids. Now the reason I didn't do it until now was because I'm not that familiar with Universal Kids. It was around during my formative years, but I was too busy watching Noggin, Nick Jr., Playhouse Disney, HBO Family, Jam, Disney Jr., Boomerang, Discovery Kids, The Hub, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Baby First TV, PBS Kids, and PBS Kids Go. The only time I ever watched it was one time when my cousin Max was watching it back when it was known as PBS Kids Sprout, and even then I watched for maybe a few minutes. I also remember seeing the Sprout Parade float in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade several years ago. But other than that, I never really paid much attention to it at all. But judging by how much you wanted to see it, I knew I couldn't ignore it forever. So here it is. The History of Universal Kids. How did this channel come to be, and why did it go through three names? In this video, we're going to find that out. On October 20th, 2004, the Public Broadcasting Service announced a partnership with Comcast, Hint Entertainment, and Sesame Workshop to create a new subscription-based channel for preschoolers. Some of you may be wondering, wasn't PBS Kids already aimed at preschoolers? And the answer is no, not exactly. While PBS Kids targeted and still targets young children, it's a much wider spectrum of young children than just preschoolers. PBS Kids is aimed more at the 3 to 7 crowd. This new channel, however, would be aimed at kids aged 3 to 4 or younger, kind of like what Baby First TV would do two years later. On April 4th, 2005, Comcast announced that the channel would be called PBS Kids Sprout, and it launched nearly six months later, on September 26th. At first, it was launched only as an on-demand service, but it did get a channel later. Unlike PBS Kids, Sprout aired commercials. However, these ads were minimal and featured products for babies and toddlers. Among the first shows to air on the channel were Barney and Friends, Big Sister Little Brother, Kipper, Pingu, Angelina Ballerina, Booba, Caillou, Make Way for Naughty, Sesame Street, and Teletubbies. In addition to airing many programming blocks, Sprout did something unique to the channel, where it would take several episodes of short-form shows and combine them into a half-hour show of its own, complete with interstitials in between the segments. 2011 to 2013 saw a complex series of business decisions that led NBC Universal to basically get full control of the brand. To summarize, Comcast claimed a 51% share of NBC Universal, leaving Sprout in the hands of NBC Universal. Apex Partners sold Hit Entertainment to NBC Universal and claimed Hit Entertainment's share of Sprout. Sesame Workshop sold its share to NBC Universal, and then NBC Universal claimed Apex Partners and PBS's shares. This led to the PBS Kids part of the name of the channel to be removed on November 13th, 2013. While all this was going on, in July of 2012, Sprout began to run NBC Kids and Mi Telemundo on NBC and Telemundo respectively. These were blocks aimed at young children that aired on Saturday mornings and replaced Cubo, who used to air in the same time slot. If you want to learn more about how that came to be, I suggest you watch my Cubo video. Link is in the video description. On September 26, 2015, Sprout received a refresh. On May 1, 2017, since Sprout was owned entirely by NBC Universal anyway, they announced that Sprout would be rebranded as Universal Kids. Also, after the rebrand, they would begin airing shows aimed at preteens during primetime hours. They would also acquire new shows and continue to focus on original content, 
including some from DreamWorks Animation, who Universal purchased in 2016, and shows co-produced with the Family Network of Canada. Unfortunately, all this change seemed to negatively impact the channel's viewership. It dropped 30% in 2017, and then a whopping 73% in 2018. In June of 2019, to try and recover Universal Kids financially, they stopped producing new original series and shifted their focus towards acquired shows. But still, in 2019, they were the lowest viewed children's channel in the US, with only 31,000 viewers per day during primetime. Thankfully though, the decline has slowed to just 30%. So it seems Universal Kids has really fallen from its prime in recent years. Why is this? Well, I think it's because of the brand change. Not nearly as many people were familiar with Universal Kids, and even though it was the same channel, all the sudden changes probably turned people off the network. I think they should have slowed the transition from Sprout to Universal Kids, maybe add the changes to programming gradually, and make use of an intermediary brand like Universal Sprout or something like that. Even so, I wish I had watched Sprout more as a kid. It seemed like a combination of PBS Kids and Baby First TV, two channels I often watched. Now, it seems like Universal Kids is in trouble. Can they dig themselves out of their hole? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching, and thank you for sticking with me this past year, and as always, stay tuned.